In a previous video, we briefly introduced you to auto-floating dormers. You may recall that a floating dormer is supported by a roof plane and not by attic walls. I'll click the auto-floating dormer child button and click here to place a floating dormer. Now if we look in a back clip cross-section view, we see that the dormer walls bear on the roof and do not project below. This is because they've been assigned the roof cuts wall at bottom property. I'll tile these windows. Go back to the floor plan, move in a bit, and move the dormer. We can easily slide it up and down the roof plane. Moving it automatically moves the whole dormer unit, including the roof planes, walls, window, and roof hole. In this particular plan, I don't want to place my auto floating dormers on the first floor because I want to be able to draw interior walls without the dormer interfering. I'll delete this one that I've drawn on the first floor. And I'll place new dormers on the attic floor. At this point, I don't see anything on the attic level, but that's okay. There are roof planes below, and we can display them on this level instead. To display the roof planes in the attic plan, we need to select them all first. Go to the first floor, click the Roof Tools Parent button, then drag a selection marquee around all four roof planes. Now open these roof planes for specification and go to the Options tab. Here you can specify that the selected roof planes be displayed one floor up for editing. The roof planes now display in the attic plan, but they have not changed their position or elevation at all. We're only displaying them here to help us place the auto floating dormers more accurately. We can move them back later. I'll click the auto floating dormer tool and click in this roof plane to place one. I'm going to open the dormer for specification and change some of its properties. The wall type is right. The roof type is right. Everything looks good, except I want it to be 60 inches wide, and maybe I'll make the height 48 inches. Once I have the first dormer exactly the way I want it, I'll make copies. With the dormer selected, I'll click the Copy Paste Edit button, then I'll click the Sticky Mode Secondary Edit button so I can place multiple copies. Note that if you click partly between roof planes, you'll get a warning. A dormer must be contained completely by a roof plane. Note also how the dormers rotate to fit the roof plane. I'll press the spacebar to get out of sticky mode, then select and delete the phantom dormer we created when we clicked in an inappropriate location between two roof planes. Now that the dormers have been placed, I want to relocate them precisely. So I'll zoom in using my mouse wheel. The first thing I'll do is align this dormer vertically with the ridge of the hip roof system. I want to make sure object snaps are turned on, then I'll select this dormer. I'll click the Point to Point Move Edit button, pick up this On Object Snap indicator at the ridge of the dormer, click it, and then I'll pick up an orthogonal extension from the ridge of the roof plane, then I'll click once more. The ridge of the dormer is now aligned with the ridge of the hip roof. Now I'll use this dimension between the dormer and the roof overhang to move the dormer 6 feet from the overhang, which is 4.5 feet from the outer wall, given an 18 inch overhang. I'll click on this dimension, enter my value, and now the dormer is in place. I'll repeat this for the opposite dormer. I'll basically use the same technique with the dormers that were perpendicular to the hip ridge, except that I'll use a midpoint object snap instead of an orthogonal extension. I'll select this dormer, click the point to point move edit button, click the ridge of the dormer and use the midpoint object snap to locate the center of the ridge of our roof system. I'll use the dimension again to place it 6 feet from the overhang. I'll do the same with the opposite dormer. And we're done. They're all neatly snapped in place and precisely located. With these placements, the ridges of all four dormers will be at the same elevation. Now let's take a look at our decorative auto-floating dormers. Actually, they're not decorative in the true sense, because they can be seen from inside the model. Let's go back down to the first floor and take an interior camera view. They expose nicely in this room that has no ceiling platform. To complete our work, we'll go to the attic floor and move these roof planes back down. I'll click the Roof Tools button, hold down the Shift key, 
Marquee Select All Four Roof Planes, and click the Open Objects Edit button. On the Options tab, I'll specify to display these roof planes one floor down, and click OK. Now the attic plan shows only dormers. Go to the first floor, and we see that the roof planes are displayed here again. Notice also that on the first floor, the roof holes display but cannot be selected. This is because they are still part of the dormer architectural block. You can turn off the display of roof holes in the floor plan view without deleting them by turning off the roof openings layer in the layer display options dialog. I'll leave them on for now. For truly decorative dormers that are not exposed from the interior, we'll simply delete the roof hole. To do this, we go back to the attic floor and select a dormer. I'll click the Explode Dormer Edit button to explode the dormer into its component parts, then I'll return to the first floor, select the roof hole, and delete it. Now the opening is gone, but the dormer still sits on the roof. Let's return to the interior camera to see the results. Keep in mind that once you've exploded the dormer, it can no longer be edited as a single unit. You can do some editing with the Edit Area command, but it is slower than using unexploded dormers. So it's a good idea to keep auto dormers and auto floating dormers unexploded until they're in their final position.